So what I want to do here is with the, the data before from the first demo, I want to show you how you can take some of these or one of these gene trees and generate an alignment, simulate an alignment on this gene tree. And uh, what we have to do first is uh, enter into Mesquite a model for how to generate these um, this, this alignment. So what we do is you go to characters and we make a new character model. We're going to do a composite DNA simulation model. And I'm going to call this HKY85 because I'm going to use these parameters for the HK85Y model. Um, and I'm going to copy the parameters that are in the, again, the Madison and Knowles paper 2006. Okay, so first it's going to ask me, okay, um, about these root state, state model, equilibrium state model, and uh, I'm going to use some empirical, actually, sorry, I'm going to use some user specified. It's kind of weird. You have to, you have to click on the one item here say user specified frequencies and I'm just copying these parameters from Madison and Knowles so that's that's where they're coming from so 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.3 they sum up to one notice that um, so that's user specified just double checking that these values are what they're supposed to be here okay and I'm going to do equal rates. Actually, here I'm going to do gamma rates and use gamma rate model and use a shape parameter of 0 0.8 and leave this as four discrete categories. And down here for the rate matrix model, I'm going to do transition transversion. And it's going to ask me for the transition transversion ratio. I'm going to put in three. Okay. And then down here, this is really important. This is a scaling factor because the gene trees are stored as a, their depth is the number of generations. And this is a far too large number for to place as a branch length on these trees because um, we want these branch lengths to be a, a much smaller number. And what was suggested in this paper was 3e to the minus 8. This is an appropriate scaling factor. Um, you'll notice that the gene trees have a, maybe a distance between 80,000 to 300,000, and this will scale them down to a good size. Okay, so we'll click OK. And the only th what this has done, all this has done is in our file, it's added a new character model. So we just have a model. It hasn't actually generated any alignments. We just have a model now that we can generate alignments. So what we do now is we go to our gene trees here, and let's say we want to generate an alignment using this this gene tree. And I'll show you a little trick here also for viewing these gene trees. If you go to drawing, tree form, actually sorry, go to down to branches proportional lengths, you can see how deep these uh, gene trees are. This one's about 250. Anyways, so let's generate an alignment off of this. So what we're going to do is go to characters and make a new matrix from, and we're going to uh, simulate matrices on trees. Okay, and we're going to select the gene trees. And we're going to do the continuous DNA. And then we're going to select our HKY85. That's the one we just entered there. And then I'll ask you number of characters. Let's simulate 1,000 base pairs. And then I'll ask you, okay, where should I get the trees from? And you say the stored trees. And we have options here to generate a matrix for which which uh, we have 100 genes, and this is we could we could potentially do any of the 100 gene trees. So let's just do the make an alignment from the first matrix here, from the first tree, and give it some name. And here you go. There's an alignment, and you notice the the number of differences are pretty pretty sparse. Um, so we have one difference here, the G, and you can scroll down, look at other differences. So there you go.